Cycling is for people of all shapes and sizes. And I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I come in the, well, taller size. But it hasn't stopped me, and I've loved riding my bike over the years. However, I have learned a few little tidbits that have helped me along the way. And I thought I'd share them with you so all us tall folk can enjoy riding our bikes together. First off, before we get into the bike and the frame sizes and my reasoning behind them, I'm gonna talk a bit about myself because I've been asked this question quite a lot. How tall are you, Connor? Well, the answer is I'm two meters and four centimeters. That's six foot eight and a half inches in old money. And my shoe size, I go for a size 49. So I hope that answers everyone's questions. Now let's get on to the bike. Right, less about me and more about the bike. This is my Pinarello Prince FX and I love this bike. But most importantly, what is the size? Now, it's a 62 centimeter frame, the biggest that Pinarello produce. And they actually do it in a lot of their road frames. They make a size this big. Now it's 62 centimeters from the bottom bracket to where the seat post would enter the frame. And it's also 62 centimeters from where the seat post starts to the head tube, that's where the stem would go into the head tube. That's horizontal length is 62 centimeters. Really important number. And I'm gonna explain why that is such a good length a bit later on in this video. And I should note that this is just kind of my own personal advice. Use it if you want, but don't take it for gospel, okay? This is just stuff I've learned over the years which I kind of prefer to use myself and I think it helps me with my riding. Okay, now onto the pedals. Now, I always preferred Shimano pedals when I was racing and still, I still do prefer them. And this is because my feet are just so big they're a size 49, I mean, they're massive. I'm not sure if you can see them there, they're, they're huge. And I just preferred a bit of a wider platform for my cleat to sit into, and I felt I had quite a bit more control with my pedal stroke as a result and felt a bit more powerful. Also, I always opted for a longer axle with whatever pedal I did actually end up using when I was racing. So on these Shimano pedals, this is a plus four millimeter axle bringing the pedal further away from the crank and widening my stance whilst I'm pedaling. Now I preferred this for a few reasons. I think it gave me a bit more power, I felt a lot more comfortable in my position because because my stance was widened, when my pedals were closer to the cranks, it felt I was like I was quite restricted in my pedaling motion and my knees would often come out. Also, <laughs> because my feet were so big, they always actually hit the cranks on every pedal stroke because my heel was so far back it would hit the crank here as I pedal and it would also hit the back of the frame. If my shoe was too close to the crank arm, when I came back round at the, at the other side of the revolution, it would just nip this part of the frame because it was too close. So I always brought the pedals out, gave me a bit more room at the back of the frame and I could get, get my cleat set up in the right position relative to my pedaling stroke and I wouldn't be hitting the frame and rubbing it. Now these cranks are 175 mil in length, but when I was racing, I often used 180 mil. And I think 180 mil is a little bit better if you're a taller rider. I often found I had a bit more power on those real steep climbs. I could put down the torque a bit better and I could accelerate a bit better from a sort of standing start position, which was quite important when you're on steep climbs or you're having to accelerate in the peloton. But upon stopping racing, I've decided to go back down to 175 mil. I never really found there was much of a difference in comfort between 175 and 180. It didn't really impact me too badly in, in that area. So I decided to stick to 175 for the simple reason that it's easier. Now working for GCN, I'm very, very lucky to ride a lot of different bikes and a lot of different manufacturers and we're come, kind of changing bikes quite a lot. And I just felt it would be easier to stick to 175 because it's quite an industry standard. You often get 175 mil on a frame when it would arrive and I wouldn't have to put in any special request to change to 180 mil. And I didn't want to kind of be switching either between lengths. I didn't want to ride 180 mil one day and then my other bike be on 175. So I just decided to keep everything uniform and stick to 175. And to be honest, it hasn't really impacted my riding. I haven't really noticed too much of a difference. Okay, as you can see, I prefer to ride a frame with rather large head tube. This one is 25.5 centimetres long and it's actually 
the biggest head tube I've ever had on a frame, but I love it. And I really recommend it to any other tall riders out there. Now it allows me to have a position where I'm just not reaching too far down. The drop between the saddle and the handlebars isn't too much. If you're a tall rider, when your saddle and your seat post is quite high, the drop can be rather big if you ride a frame that's too small. And I always found I got terrible back pain if, I, if my drop was too large. I just wasn't flexible enough to manage the position. So I always preferred to raise the handlebars up and be a bit more relaxed at the front. And as a result, I was a lot more comfortable and I could put down more power to the pedals. So don't get drawn into slamming that stem if you're super tall. Just try and relax a bit and be a bit more comfortable when you're riding. Now, my saddle height is around 86 centimetres. I did kind of chop and change a bit. I like to tinker with my position. And I'd say it often went up to kind of 88, 89 centimetres. <laughs> when I was in form, I like to put my saddle up. And when I wasn't in form, I like to put it down. So at the moment, it's down. <laughs> but anyway, it was often around 86 centimetres. If you're a tall rider, I would recommend getting a frame which doesn't leave you with too much seat post exposed above the frame. Now my Pinarello, I love it because it means my seat post can sit quite far into the frame actually. And I always found this a lot more secure and as a result, the frame felt stiffer. In the past, I've ridden frames which were too small for me and the seat post was flying out of the bike. I had to get a specially made extra long seat post. And it looks kind of quirky, but I just didn't like it. And I actually broke a lot of frames this way because there'll be so much seat post out that you kind of get this swaying motion when you were pedaling. And I think it just put too much force on the back of the frame and I'd often get cracks in the frame as a result. So if you can, get a frame which doesn't expose too much of that seat post and you can get a nice comfortable position without having to buy an extra long seat post. Saddle choice is a very personal thing for any rider. As a tall rider, what I'd really recommend is looking around and getting the saddle that's right for you. And if I'm honest, I'd go for a stronger saddle. I wouldn't, I'd stay away from the lightweight ones, which after time, they will kind of tend to sag a bit, a bit quicker due to your weight. Any tall rider will know we are on the heavy side of things. I'm 90 kilos, so if my saddle wasn't that strong, it would actually begin to sag after even a couple of weeks, if I'm honest. So I'd always choose a carbon reinforced saddle that would be a bit stiffer and put up with my weight for longer. My favorite saddle, was a Physique Arione, and I feel very lucky to be able to ride one at the moment for GCM. I like the Arione because it's got quite a lot of service here. It's a long saddle and it's flat, so I can move my position around quite a lot on the saddle, not be restricted to one real specific point on the saddle. And it also has a lot of service here on the back for my seat bones, and I just felt super comfortable on it. Always loved it when I was racing, and yeah, loving it now too. Okay, as a taller rider, you do need to bear in mind the frame material. Now, carbon is a great option. I think it works the best, in my opinion. There are people who might disagree with me. This frame is carbon. And in the past, I always raced on a carbon fibre frame, but I did often ride an alloy frame. And if you're struggling to find a carbon fibre frame that fits you, I really would recommend other materials. Alloy is a bit easier to get a custom geometry and there are a few manufacturers out there who will make you a custom frame. I've ridden a custom frame by Condor Cycles in the past. It was really quick from giving my measurements, they could quickly knock out a custom, custom sized frame for me and get the measurements which I preferred. So if you are struggling to find a frame that does fit, that's a great option to consider. Okay, wheels next, and if you're a tall rider, I just wouldn't skimp on wheels. Make sure you get a good quality set, and if you can, go for a stronger build with a few more spokes. Now, that's because us tall riders are on the heavy side, and I've often broken cheaper wheels in the past just because they aren't strong enough to stand up to my weight. So I'd say a good tip, invest in a good set of wheels. Okay, now when I was choosing my handlebars, I always liked to opt for a handlebar with more reach at the front here. If you're a tall rider, you often have big hands, so having more reach on the handlebars will give you more space and you won't feel like your hands are crowding the hoods too much or you feel too cramped up at the front here. Also, as tall riders, due to our big hands, I often found it very hard to grip the handlebars. It's quite a strange complaint. I often felt the handlebars are too thin and as a result, I got quite like sore knuckles, especially on rough terrain or cobbles. And I combated this by double wrapping my handlebar tape. This gave a lot more circumference to the handlebar, so I had more to grip onto, and it just gave sort of, 
I guess it's hard to describe really, a bigger sort of surface area to grip onto and it meant my grip was bigger too. So I didn't get that claw hand. My hands felt a lot more comfortable and this translated to more comfort in my upper arms and my forearms. So I'd really recommend it if you have big hands and you're struggling to grip onto those bars, double wrap the bar tape and you'll feel a lot more comfortable as a result. Stem size now and I always opted for a 14 centimetre stem mostly due to the fact that I love to have plenty of reach out at the front of my bike. There's loads of stem sizes out there and if you have got a smaller bike, you can get a longer stem than 14 centimetres. You can go to 15 centimetres or even 16 centimetres if you do want more reach at the front. So check it out and give it a bit of a research. It's not the end of the world if you're restricted at the front end. You can always make it longer. Okay, now another thing to bear in mind if you're a taller rider, and again, us taller riders are a bit heavier, think about your gear selection. I loved to go for a 34 or a 36 inner ring at the front. You get this with a compact chain set, and I just recommend this for any rider out there. I'm using one on my bike at the moment. Us heavier riders are always a bit slower on the steeper climbs, and I prefer to have an easier gear so I could spin up these climbs a bit more instead of suffering with a lower cadence. Do yourself a favour, give yourself a bit of an easier gear selection. Don't feel bad about it or like you're letting the side down. We all, we all do it. Okay, us taller riders always have big feet. It's a known fact. My shoe size is a size 49 European. That's around 13 UK, I think that's 14 US. And my physiques are actually a size 48 EU, which is the biggest size they make. They came up a bit bigger actually, so I was lucky enough to fit into a size 48. And I'd say if you're struggling to get shoes that fit, just shop around a bit. There, is, there are a lot of manufacturers out there who will do a little bit bigger. Some will go to 49, some will go even higher than that. But if it, there is a shoe that you really have set your sights on and you have massive, massive feet, what I'd recommend is contacting that manufacturer directly. And you'll quite often be able to get a custom made pair of shoes. It might cost you a bit more money, but it is possible, so don't give up. Contact them directly and get your custom set of shoes. Quick one on clothing now when you're riding. So when I was racing, I always opted for a size medium. And I did this because I like to have my clothing quite tight fitting, it was a bit more aerodynamic. And a medium would always be really short on my legs and my arms, it would look a bit silly. So <laughs> I'd often get it custom made and I'd get plus 10, plus 15, or plus even sometimes plus 20 centimetres length on the shorts, which would combat the problem of my shorts looking way too small. And do the same with my jersey, I'd get about plus five centimetres on the arms and often plus five centimetres on the length of the jersey, sometimes plus 10 centimetres on the length of the jersey. And I did this for pretty much every team I rode for. So I was very lucky to be able to do that. But if you do want custom sized clothing, there's a few manufacturers out there, shop around, have a look, and uh, you, can, you can get it done. So don't give up. Okay, us taller riders, again, we're heavier. We have more weight putting down on the road. So if you can, go for a 28 mil width tire. I think this is the better option for us tall riders because it gives a more comfortable ride, you have more surface here on the road, it absorbs the bumps more, so you don't quite feel as if you're squishing the bike onto the road, so to speak, and it'll just give you a more comfortable ride generally. So if you can, get a 28 mil tyre and I promise you, you won't regret it. So thank you for watching. I've really enjoyed making this actually and sharing some of the knowledge I've gained over the years about riding as a tall rider. We are a rare breed, so we do need to share all that knowledge. Please get commenting in the section below if you have any other tips that I might have missed. It's great to share it all between us. And yeah, if you're not tall, I hope you enjoyed this video just to see some of the little tip bits and the little tweaks I've made to my bike as I've been riding throughout the years. Uh, it's been a bit, bit of a, and trip down memory lane looking back on it, especially the double wrapping of handlebar tape. <laughs> uh, thanks everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, see, see you in another video.